Hello class, this is section 7.2 and in this video we are going to introduce higher dimensional partial differential equations. We have talked a lot about the heat equation and the vibrating string equation in one dimension and now we want to see how we can apply these equations to higher dimensional problems. One general principle is that the second derivative of u with respect to x is always going to be roughly analogous to the Laplacian operator applied to u. And this makes sense if you remember what you've learned in um, multivariable calculus. So given that, let's see what the two-dimensional version of this problem is like. The time derivative remains the same. It's y t and we replace the second derivative with the Laplacian, so it's going to be, instead of uh, du dx squared, it's just going to be d squared u dx squared xyt plus the y derivative, that's what the Laplacian is. Right, so that's your heat equation for two dimensions. Similarly, for the vibrating membrane, a 2D version of the vibrating string equation, we write, instead of uh, uxt, we write partial of xyt. This gives the height of the membrane, the membrane at the position xy at time t. Partial t squared equals c squared times the Laplacian. So that's going to be uxyt partial x squared plus partial squared uxyt partial y squared. Let's consider a three-dimensional version of the heat equation and that's going to be pretty much the same thing. Now we consider x, y, z, t and this is going to be equal to k times partial squared u partial x squared x, y, z, t and so on. A um, few things to note. First, remember that when you take the Laplacian, you only need to add the second derivatives of the space variables x, y, and z. You never include the time variable t. Oh, um, yeah, and I did leave out the 3D vibrating string equation. In the one-dimensional case, we are thinking of a string, one-dimensional object, vibrating in two dimensions, up and down. In the vibrating membrane, equation, we're thinking of a trampoline, a membrane, uh, moving up and down in three space. In the three-dimensional version, you will be, have to think about a blob maybe vibrating in four-dimensional space, and uh, the book doesn't cover that. And it is something that mathematicians and physicists care about, actually, how three-dimensional solids vibrate in four-dimensional space. But I don't think that's an appropriate thing to think about in this class, so we're not going to cover that at all. But anyway, uh, this is uh, how you write down higher dimensional versions of these equations. And again, uh, apologize for not showing you the derivations, but they are in the book if you need to see them. And in spirit, they are pretty similar to the derivations of the one dimensional equations.